tonight I'm going to be taking a picture of a nebula in space. Yes, a nebula from my very own backyard. Tonight I'm going to be taking a picture of a nebula in space. Yes, a nebula from my very own backyard. This nebula is called IC1396 for the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, and I'm going to be using my camera and telescope setup shown here to reveal the magnificent details and colors shown in this nebula. With this combined force, I'm going to reveal what our eyes are not able to see over many hours and days. This is Tanner from Astro Tan, and welcome to the YouTube channel. Well, welcome back you guys, and we have a crazy weather schedule coming up this week. It's going to be clear almost every single night for the 10 day forecast. I checked it and it's going to be absolutely crazy. I have a ton of targets in mind. But tonight all eyes are on the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and I've been wanting to do this for forever. With my old setup, like I said, my stock DSLR, my little filter setup was not really that great last year. And I did it during a full moon, so I got really no result. I was barely able to see the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. But just like the Wizard Nebula, tonight's going to be very different. I have an improved setup. I have better knowledge. I have better processing skills. Everything's going to be way better this time around. And I'm super excited to see what image I'm able to get out of tonight and tomorrow and the next day. It is a nice and warm 76 degrees and windy today. And summer is slowly starting to come to an end, as much as I loved this summer, even though it wasn't really the greatest for astrophotography, but for other things it was awesome. And next week it'll already be September, so I'm, we're excited to see all the fall and winter constellations and targets starting to make their approach back in the night sky. As much as I love summer, I've talked about this before, the nights are a lot shorter in the summertime, and that's due to the sun's position in the daytime. The sun is out a lot more in comparison to winter, and that's because the sun is directly overhead ahead of us during the daytime effectively gives us longer days and shorter nights. In summertime the nights can range between 5 to 6 hours and in the winter time around 9 to 12. And I don't know about you but I take the 9 to 12 hour nights for more imaging time in comparison to a 5 to 6 hour window. I've also said this before the moon takes a crucial part in this little process of summer and winter nights because you can easily tell that when the sun and the moon are in different areas of the night sky that kind of tells you where the sun will be in different coming seasons. You might notice right now that the moon is not really, I guess, really overhead at the night. It kind of skirts the horizon a little bit. And that's exactly where the sun will be in the winter time and fall months. And then you'll notice now that the sun is directly overhead of us and kind of goes straight over the sky. And in the winter time, that's what the moon will do. So pretty cool how that stuff works. So I also just remembered that tonight's actually Saturn's opposition as of the making of this video. And I don't really know if I'm going to get any pictures of it tonight because for me it's a school night, it's a nice little Sunday night, and I don't really like to stay up late for Sunday nights especially because the next day I have a Monday and I have to be at school by 8 o'clock, so I can't really be staying up that late for Saturn. I guess another thing that I've kind of admitted is that I kind of need a bigger telescope to even see Saturn and Jupiter, those planets, really in detail. I mean, I have my Max Utah Cassegrain telescope that's actually really good and designed for planets but I don't really think that it's much effective in terms of like really seeing those really fine details even though there's a lot of processing tricks that you could use to really enhance the detail and structure on the planets I don't really see how it can really help in terms of the general aspect and you kind of just need a bigger telescope for it. So I've had a lot of plans recently on what I'm going to buy next and this kind of follows along with the idea of getting a bigger telescope for planets and for just general deep sky astrophotography to even see finer details. And I've been leaning on getting a Newtonian telescope and this will replace my refractor on my setup right now and I'll use it for actually planetary and deep sky astrophotography astrophotography as crazy as that sounds. Tonians are very versatile and you could use them for a lot of different things. Even though you have to collimate them once in a while, especially if you're traveling, it's really not that big of a deal and once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. I have a lot of experience with Newtonian telescopes and actually my first telescope that I used for, for some basic astrophotography was the Orion Star Blast 4.5 and, and this was a great little telescope. It wasn't designed for astrophotography at all, but I still 
still used it with a phone and a little app that was supposed to be night vision, but it didn't really work that much. But back then I was really surprised at all the stuff that I was able to get with just a little telescope like this one. I got a lot of my planetary skills started with this telescope and I got some of my best pictures with that telescope too. I give all credit to that telescope for where I am now because without it and all of those little moments that I had with this telescope, I wouldn't be anywhere where I was today. I wouldn't have any of those same experiences with my setup now if it weren't for that little guy. Sadly, it's long gone into a new owner somewhere across the world, so, so hopefully they're enjoying it as much as I did. The reason I had to get rid of it was so I could actually get this is set up right there. I actually had to sell basically everything so I could afford this setup that I have now. So even though I didn't really want to do it, it was a sacrifice that I had to make. So I'm glad, but also not glad. So I feel like most people don't really know what astrophotography really is. I mean, I don't really expect people to know that we're able to get these pictures of nebula and galaxies from our backyards. I used to really think that astrophotography was only things that NASA and Hubble did in for average people, just people taking pictures of like the stars and just the Milky Way at dark sky sites. But when most people find out that you could take pictures of stuff like this from their very own backyards, it's pretty crazy. So when I found out that I could take pictures of nebulae and all that, I was flipping my mind. So if you want to do something like this, yes, you'll have to make some little purchases, but other than that, it's going to be a really fun thing for you to do. So a little more about the nebula itself that I'll be taking a picture of tonight. It is called IC1396, and it is also called, or I guess what you should call it, is the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. It's located in the constellation of Cepheus, and it is a little bit further down down in terms of the Milky Way arch in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a really bright target, especially for people who use dedicated astronomy cameras like myself. And it's really one of those targets that you need a filter for, and filters will help isolate the nebula colors from the street light and the moon colors that we see that kind of outshine the nebula in the night sky. So I'm going to be using my dual narrowband filter, the Optolong L Enhanced tonight, and it is great at what it does at isolating those red and blue colors that we want to see. This nebula is very profound in HA and O3, which are the red and blue colors, so you already know that that's a perfect matchup for my filter. There's really two ways of going at this target. You could use it with these filters like I'm going to be using it tonight, or you can use it with no filters and you can get a lot of those natural star colors. Filters will try to get natural star colors, but it's really the best if you use no filter because then you're allowing all visible light on the visible light spectrum to pass through your camera, so then you're able to get all of those natural star colors. And in this nebula there are a ton of star colors. Red, blue, orange, yellow, they are all there. So you're probably wondering why all these little nebula names are so weird, like the Wizard Nebula, the Cocoon Nebula, the North America Nebula, and you might wonder, like, why did they call it those things? Well, if your first guess was because they look like those things, that's a pretty accurate guess. But a lot of the times we nickname these just because they have some really crazy names. And for astronomical scientists, they name a lot of these objects really technical and little numbered names, like NGC 7000. IC 1396, Messier 16, and these are actually really important names by themselves because they help catalog them in the night sky. And so when we find these nebulae, we don't ask ourselves, well, what is this nebula? And then you'll find out that they will actually be cataloged already. So for us astrophotographers that don't really go to discover things, this is what we call them. subs coming in are absolutely amazing and you can really see why they call it the elephant's trunk it's it's really incredible guys 
and you guys will definitely see that when I reveal my image at the end. So this is my first night shooting this target and I feel like it will definitely need a lot more exposure time just based off of the exposures that I'm seeing coming through my camera. Even though it's a bright target, it's also a little bit faint in some areas so I will have to image this over multiple nights and get the maximum exposure time or at least the amount of exposure time that I think is necessary on this image. The moon is about half lit right now and it doesn't really pose a problem because I'm shooting directly overhead and the moon right now is just skirting the horizon like it does in the summertime so luckily I don't have to worry about that so that's something to relieve off of me. Without further ado it's time for the image reveal until next time clear skies.